If you're seeing this, your ancestors want you to know it's July 23rd. Stop with the fucking fireworks. I don't know, they said it was important. Y'all see this shit? What's up, y'all? It's your favorite resident chaos ball and glack. God, I gotta do that one again. Welcome to Thunderdome, bitch. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your favorite chaos ball and resident galactic tour guide, y'all, aka the GOAT Coach. And this is the Heavens the Classified Galactic Survival Guide, where we take a look at what the hell is going on in the heavens and figure out not only how to survive it, but how to thrive in it. This weekly reading is gonna be broken down into five parts. Part one will be an overview and breakdown of the card of the week. Part two will cover any planetary aspects and major transits we can expect this week. Part three is gonna be going over the card transits for the week. Part four will be a really brief horoscope for all of my 12 zodiac signs. Keep in mind that these will apply to both sun, moon, and rising signs. And last but most certainly not least, we'll do a five card spread, which I like to call the cheat sheet, which will show us how to thrive throughout this week. Are you ready kids? Let go! So this week is an iconic week as we have the four of diamonds that we're dealing with. This card takes all that mix up and creative and let go energy that we went through last week and basically puts it on overdrive by giving us a chance to narrow our focus and get clear on exactly what it is we want out of life. Now the Four of Diamonds draws its power from the fact that it sits between two really restless karma cards. With the Five of Hearts as its South Node and the Five of Spades as its North Node respectively. Which essentially asks the Four of Diamonds to leave behind their restless wandering ways and work on creating breakthroughs by zeroing in on the things that they really want and being willing to put in whatever the work is necessary in order to get it. Which is why you'll usually find four of diamonds at the forefront of any field that they're in, as their powers of hard work, manifestation, and pretty much the ability to see beyond any bullshit guarantee that what they'll create will be nothing less than iconic. But enough of the high level. Let's dive into the breakdown, shall we? Now, as we are officially in Leo season, this week is going to be governed by the Four of Diamonds itself, which puts extra emphasis on the message of getting clear, making sure that you're putting in the work, and writing out actionable steps in order for you to get to where you're trying to go. Now, with its moon card being the Four of Hearts and the Queen of Clubs, respectively, its emotional support comes from keeping a really tight-knit circle and focusing on the things that are most important, and also trusting that intuition when it speaks to you. Trust me, y'all, if there was ever a week where you want to make sure you listen to that still small voice, it would be this one. Like, don't, don't ignore when the spirits talk this week because you can get fucked up. I'm just saying. Now, also with that Queen of Clubs moon, you want to make sure that you do not overcomplicate things this week because it's going to be real easy to. Because that thing love to have you spin it. Queen of Clubs likes to spin in circles sometimes. And it's best instead to just follow your intuition and do what you was going to do the first time. Don't, don't change your mind too much. It's, it's not going to work out in your favor. For God's sake, just stick to the plan. Please. Now in the Mercury position, which rules our thinking, communication, and so on and so forth, we have the two of spades coupled with the Jack of Clubs which may ask us to merge disparate belief systems, disparate elements, or even just get out there and partner and network with people who might be able to help push our dreams forward. This is a really big collaborative effort week, so it's a really good week to share your dreams with those who are rooting for you, not the haters, because there is a difference, you know what I'm saying? And a great week to help other people working on their ideas as well too. Just be sure that whatever collaborative efforts that you are making are actually moving you forward and not just sitting there deliberating on what's the best way to get things done. Perfectionism doesn't work in your favor this week. Just go for it. 
in the Venus position, which deals with partnerships, money, values, all that jazz, we got the Eight of Hearts and the Five of Hearts. Which honestly brings potential for fuckboy energy as the Riz will be very strong with you this week. Did I use that right? Gen Z, feel free to chime in in the comments and embarrass me if you have to. I don't take it personal. I'm old. It is what it is. In the Mars position, which deals with action and impulse, we got the Six of Clubs and the Four of Spades. So this is a slow and steady and nostalgic type of week and not, again, a good week to start anything new, but rather a good time to review things that you've already been working on and start following your intuition on ways to put plans into motion so that you can do what needs to be done with it. And ideally, you're going to be working towards things that are going to be bringing you closer towards your destiny, not further away from it this week which means it's definitely a good time for peaceful action. That means stop letting off fucking fireworks. Seriously. It's no holidays. People are trying to sleep. In the Jupiter position, which deals with growth, expansion, and perspective, we got the Six of Spades and the King of Diamonds which basically asks you to embrace the law of karma this week and accept that everything happens or doesn't happen for a reason, but to do so without developing tunnel vision or really paranoid perspectives about the world being out to get you. Note with the double sixes this week, this is not a week to be off to the races. Slow and steady literally wins the race this week. So don't rush. Take your time, look over things carefully, go through them once, twice, maybe a third time just for good measure, and then go through with it. In the Saturn position of rules, regulations, and restrictions is the Queen of Hearts coupled with the Seven of Diamonds. I'm not going to lie to y'all. The Queen of Hearts deals with motherhood, marriages, and stuff like that. So y'all finna get tested this week. And by y'all, I mean us. Relationships with women can feel a little constricting this week and so can relationships with the kids and just taking care of the household in general. Not gonna lie, it's definitely gonna be a lot of stress. Not gonna lie, a lot of y'all not gonna be feeling your spouses or your children or just the nurturing, mothering role, period, this week. But it's not a bad thing. It's simply a structural stress test, just showing you areas where you could be better prepared, put better systems in place, and just have better cooperation and collaboration overall so that you can get the things that you need to get done around the house that need to get done. Whatever you do, don't overeat or overindulge this week because it's not going to work out in your favor. Trust me on this. In the Uranus position, which deals with surprises, changes, evolution, and innovation, we have the Ten of Clubs and the Ace of Clubs. Now, the Ten of Clubs normally alone is borderline crackhead energy. It's be bouncing off the wall because it's just like you have all the ideas all the time. Then you couple it with the Ace of Clubs. It's just going to mean for a very busy mind this week. So you want to avoid scattering this very powerful mental impulse and the energy around it and instead use it to focus on things that you may have given up on or may need to revisit so that you can go ahead and bring new life into it. Except if it involves fireworks. Seriously, stop with the fucking fireworks, dude. In the Neptune position, which deals with escape, meditation, vision, spirituality, all that jazz, we have the Eight of Diamonds, which is honestly going to give you the power that you need in order to really bring some of the things that you've been thinking about long-term to life and really hone in on your manifestation abilities. Just be mindful of overspending, again, overindulging or overeating. And most importantly, don't overspend this week because the eight of diamonds, you don't want to spend to escape. Trust me, it's not going to work in your favor. Also, be leery of thinking that there is only one solution to your problem this week or any problems that may pop up. Usually with the Eight of Diamonds, it can make you a little bit on a stubborn side. Just be open-minded and let the possibilities flow in. 
in Pluto, the planet of transformation and change and just reincarnation. We have the king of spades, which means you have the mental clarity, the courage, the fortitude, and everything you need to make any necessary changes that need to be made this week and rid yourself of any behaviors that are getting in the way of what exactly it is you're trying to bring about. Just be sure to keep whatever plans you have in place relatively simple as being too complex and overcomplicated is just going to result in you getting stuck in an endless pursuit of perfection and analysis paralysis. You ain't going to get shit done if you do that. Now, if you can keep it to a simple plan, the result reward card for the week is the three of hearts, which promises you ultimate creativity and a plethora of options especially in the relationship field or it'll bring you emotional insecurity and instability if you got stuck in analysis paralysis which is why i said don't complicate the plan because nobody likes an insecure person be mindful not to overcommit to the options that present themselves this week as it's really more so about kicking ideas around and getting new life and new blood into things that were old previously rather than really honing in on one particular way of doing things. Again, keep your options open. Now the challenge for this week is the Ace of Clubs which at its highest side is really asking you to seek out the knowledge, the people, and the things that you need to know in order to make the things that you are trying to bring to life a reality. And honestly, if you don't honor that, that's honestly going to put you into some volatile situations that don't benefit anyone. So it's, it's just best to be on your P's and Q's and do your research this week. It's better for everyone. Also, beware of futile arguments and unnecessary arguments this week. It's just not worth it, fam. Nobody wins when the family feuds. I don't know who that was for. Except maybe Steve Harvey. I don't know. It'll make sense later. Moving on. Now, if you can handle those challenges that were thrown at you this week, the transformation result is the Ten of Spades which is powerful, groundbreaking energy that if you spent your time right this week will allow you to be at the pinnacle of success. And if you didn't, you're going to be overworked and exhausted. As my mom would say, no, I beg you, please spend your energy right this week. Next up is our planetary transits, and we're going to start with my favorite, the moon. Libra, Sag, and Scorpio placements, it is your turn in the hot seat as the moon slides up on through your signs this week. So if your favorite Libra, Scorpio, or Sag is a little aggy this week, you know why. Now the moon will be sliding from waxing crescent into first quarter and sliding right on into the waxing gibbous phase this week. This means that lunar focus is going to be moving from gathering ideas, concepts, and materials to organizing those concepts and materials into a way that makes sense so that you can ultimately begin testing out ideas that you've been leaving on the back burner for a little bit. So the moon in Libra on the 23rd is asking us to find emotional balance by taking the time to weigh and kind of feel out what we've learned so far for the month and see what's worth keeping and what's worth throwing away. Scorpio moon on the 25th asks us to take what we've successfully weighed on that Libra scale and put it through the ringer so that we can get it down to its essence and see what it is the lesson of the month is really trying to get through to us. Sag Moon on the 28th asks us to expand and build on those ideas and concepts that we've put through the ringer. And that way we can find a good testing ground for them when the time comes to take action. All right, the aspects aren't too bad this week. Right now, the toughest thing that I see is that we've got Mercury square Uranus Whew, on the 23rd, while simultaneously conjuncting Lilith on the 23rd as well. So 
So honestly, don't take anything that happens personally this week, especially on Sunday and moving on into the earlier parts of the week. Because we got our thinking and communication going up against our inventiveness and our primal selves with Lilith. So instead of getting aggy and all up in your feelings this week, the best thing for you to do is to remain flexible about the information that you're taking in, feel out what feels right for you, and if it don't apply, let it fly. Plus, honestly, we got Venus and Chiron that just went into retrograde. So this is a time where people are going to be feeling extra tender and revisiting the past and hurts and old wounds and relationships anyway. Best thing to do with situations like that is just feel out what comes your way and then just leave it be. That's it. Also, Leo is a sign that can tend to bring on drama and all that other shit. So... It's best if you don't text your ex, unless God themselves tell you otherwise. And you have to have like three other angels co-sign that it was actually God that said to do that. Don't go back there, just say. Use that energy instead to look inward, especially with Chiron retrograding in the sign of I am or Aries and see how you can alchemize some of the wounds that made you who you are and find a way to do better for yourself and attract better for yourself. Preferably not that X, just saying. Now on the 27th, we have an exact conjunction between Venus and Mercury. So that puts love on the brain as well as money and values and art and fashion as well too. So instead of using this time to write love letters and texts that might backfire once Venus goes direct, instead, use this time to refine your communication aesthetics. Work on your sales pitches, work on your you know, personal uh, pages, social media outlets, refining your resume a little bit, taking some etiquette classes. Focus on things that are going to bring more value to you, that are going to bring more beauty and pleasure to you instead. Just focus on that instead. Don't, don't get caught up in the love spell that's going on in the air. Just, just don't do it. I'm saying this because that conjunction is going to be in direct opposition with Saturn for a little bit, which just is going to be like a tug of war or anything. Um, and it's also going to be briefly square the moon when it hits Scorpio on the 25th and definitely square Uranus. So it, it's just better to just focus on yourself in this time period and work on yourself. Use that energy inward. Use that beautification energy and work on yourself. It's just better that way. And now for the card transits, starting with Sunday, which is a five of clubs day. So that's going to kick us off with some restless energy, a lot of mental things going on as you kind of zooming from idea to idea. So beware of all of the ideas that are coming up at this point in time, especially with Venus and Chiron and all of those other things that you got going on in the skies. Just write the ideas down, slow down, and let that information kind of filter in through you so that you can get a clear idea of where you need to head this week. Monday is a four clubs day, so excellent day for learning and growing and networking. Just be mindful upon giving up on things too soon. Use that Libra moon energy to kind of keep you balanced and harmonic in that energy so that you can be able to use it the best way possible. Tuesday is a three of clubs day, so watch out because we can expect a little bit of hot-headedness, a little bit of short-temperedness as things kind of flare up in that period. Best way to use the energy for the day on Tuesday is to chill what they call the fuck out and redirect that energy into creative endeavors and pursuit, especially any worrisome energy that pops up in this time frame. You also want to be aware of accidents as well. So make sure you are keeping your eyes on the road. Make sure that you are dotting your eyes and crossing your T's so that everything is going smooth and cool in a fan. Wednesday is a two of clubs day. So anxiety and arguments or productive conversation. 
dealer's choice. All of this is going to boil down to how you best use this energy, which really you should be using it to have productive dialogue, taking the time to evaluate and ask questions on things, getting to know new areas that you may have been sweeping under the rug instead of letting all that anxious energy bubble up inside of you and make you start picking unnecessary arguments that really don't need to happen. Just watch out for that on Wednesday. And if you need to pop an edible or smoke some weed, Wednesday's a fantastic day to do it. Just saying. Because on Thursday, we got the Ace of Clubs and you're going to be wanting to start something. Don't just be starting shit to start shit, though. Take the time. Again, remember, this is a reflective and review week. And take this time instead to learn new ideas and concepts about old ideas and concepts that you've been sweeping under the rug. That's the best way to do that. Do not. Do not get stubborn. Do not get stuck on one point of view. Do not get stuck on one way of doing it. Because again, that energy will not end well. You, you can probably blow some trees here too. Also, on Thursday, watch out for familial and partner stress or stress involving women or anything or mothers or nurturing or anything of the sort like that. Honestly, keep in mind that the source of the stress is not where you think it's coming from. It's the fact that there's a lack of a system, lack of preparation. Those are the things that are causing the problem. So as long as you keep that in mind, you can come up with a solution to fix it rather than dwell on the problem, get mad, and be starved with something. You don't need to do that. King of Hearts Day is coming on Friday, and that is Big performance energy, big, big energy, big carve out of space for yourself kind of energy. So you want to make sure that you are using this creatively. Avoid unnecessary competitiveness, unnecessary drama, unnecessary pettiness on this day. Instead, focus on using this energy in the best way possible to carve a way forward that previously wasn't there. Also, the King of Hearts is great experimental energy. So any ideas or concepts that you are playing around and tossing around, this is a great idea. Or I should say, this is a great time for you to test those things out. And finally, Saturday closes us out with a Queen of Hearts. So again, keeping in mind that that is the Saturn card for the week, this is an energy that's going to be very tense this particular week. Um, so you want to make sure that you are spending time nurturing yourself in a sustainable way, nurturing your family in a sustainable way, nurturing your relationships in a sustainable way on Saturday. You know, take your time going out. Don't go out and do nothing too crazy. Just spend time enjoying and loving on each other in the best way possible. So that way you can close your week out on a high note. Also, as this is a day that's probably going to be prone to burnout, if you need to say, team fuck them kids, today is what I'm on, or team fuck that spouse, today is what I'm on, and go take a nap, then go ahead and take a nap. Just as long as you're not saying fuck yourself, unless you plan on fucking yourself, which is not a bad day to fuck yourself that day, because, you know, masturbation would actually be a beneficial use of that energy. Kind of. However you want to do it. Sex is good on that day, is what I'm saying either alone or with somebody else doesn't matter i mean that would be the place for some fireworks is what i'm saying well not not actual like literal fireworks like don't do that don't do that that's a safety hazard moving on to horoscopes remember these apply to your sun moon and rising sign respectively so read and weep aries your intuition is on 10 this way. Do not be hard-headed and try to bulldoze past it and ignore it. It will only end in tears. Your best bet is to listen to that little tiny small voice inside of you. Follow what it's saying because it's trying to get you on the road to your personal destiny so that you can finally move forward instead of spinning in circles. Taurus, love is in the air, or at least the imitation of it is. Uh, you're going to be pretty popular this week, um, but 
don't necessarily commit to anything that comes your way if you're single. Um, now is really more so a good time to focus on what it is that you really want and use the options that are coming your way to let you know which way it is that you want to head when it comes to that relationship wise. Money's also going to be looking pretty good this week, so probably a good idea to pitch some, some business ideas and ventures this week too. Gemini, it's a good week to come out your bubble and mix and mingle with people this week as you, again, too, are in the spotlight for partnerships. Do be mindful, though, of the people that you partner with. Make sure that they are pushing you forward and not keeping you spinning in circles with BS. And remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Cancer, this is a week to take stock of your inner circle and the people around you and follow your intuition regarding them, especially when it comes to making some decisions that you have been putting off in regards to them. So that way you can be able to function properly because you need to make sure you get the right people around you so that you don't end up in an emotional doom spiral. Just saying. Don't overcomplicate the decision either. Just make go with your gut. It won't lead you astray. Leo, it's your season, baby. And just like last week asked you to take a risk, this week's going to ask you to improve upon the risk that you took last week. Um, best thing to do in this particular instance is review the tapes, be willing to put in the work, and get clear on your vision and direction. It won't lead you astray. Virgo, you are also in the networking hot seat in much of the same way as Gemini is, only this time you are playing the keen and cautious observer. So that way you can go ahead and put into action some of the things that you wrote down last week and you began planning with and looking for people who can help you execute those things in a concise manner. Do not be a control freak this week. Do not focus on perfection this week. Do not get into analysis paralysis this week. This week is all about connecting with who you need to to move forward the way that you need to. Gabish, Good. Libra, you are extra popular this week and allow yourself to enjoy the attention as you've got the riz now. Again, Gen Z, feel free to embarrass me in the comments if I'm not using that correctly. It's the only right thing to do. Just remember that this is not about commitment necessarily as much as it is about powering through emotionally and identifying what it is that you want long term. You can do that. You can enjoy the little extra flirtatious attention that you get this week. Scorpio, this is not the week to second guess yourself. Your intuition is on 10. You have the mental fortitude and the mental ability to carry out whatever plans it is that you are on. Do so. No questions asked. Sagittarius, once again, you have fooled around long enough. This week is going to be all about connecting in with your destiny, getting clear on the vision, and organizing yourself in such a way that you can finally take action instead of being stubborn and hard-headed. No, this is not the week to be a tyrant. It will not work in your favor. Capricorn, family life, marriage, and partnership is definitely going to be a challenge for you this week. But then again, when is it not? <laughs> so take the time to slow down and check in and see where your systems and settings need to be adjusted so that you can be able to have the things that you are after when it comes to family life, marriage, and partnership. Aquarius, do me a favor and slow down this week because you are going to be mentally on 10. Idea after idea after idea is going to come and find you. Now is not the time to act on new ones, but instead to find a way to reinvigorate old ones and bring those to life. Slow down, breathe, relax, relate, and release, and you will experience success this week. And Pisces, last but not least, baby, it is your time to shine this week. So enjoy your time in the spotlight. Do be careful about overeating, overspending, and overindulging this week as that will not work in your favor. 
Also beware of being extra stubborn for no reason. That is also not going to work in your favor. Your best bet is to enjoy and power through and use this newfound power to create the life that you want. And now for the fun part. This week's five card draw is going to come from the Hip Hop Queens Oracle deck by Kathy Yandoli. This is going to be the live portion of the video. As in, I am not going to stop. I am just going to roll with it and see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up and see what do we need to know to thrive this week. All right, so we're going to shuffle. See who pops out. deck because this is a 52 card deck so it's pretty straightforward and simple and it's utilizing a lot of voices from hip-hop especially female voices because sometimes we don't give them the shine that they need and or deserve because of the content of their lyrics but at the end of the day they're still doing things that their male counterparts woo, are doing and I think I got a couple just flew out here i'm gonna read them right side up instead of flipping them the other way around because again this is about thriving not anything else so we want to read the positive interpretation so let's see Alright, so the first one, finesse, cash doll, finesse. So this week is about using and refining your finesse. Again, remember we got Venus and um, Mercury conjuncting each other towards the end of the week. So we're wanting to make sure that we're smoothing things out and operating in the way that we need to in a more uh, diplomatic way as opposed to trying to like bulldoze our way through obstacles and solutions and everything. So we want to be smooth as silk this week. All right, Roxanne Chante comes up next. So we got defense, right? So keeping your mind protected, keeping yourself protected, uh, keeping your family protected is going to be very important and critical this week, especially with all of these energies kind of coming up and tugging at you. Um, and a lot of it is going to make it feel like you're being, I wouldn't say attacked, but it's going to make it feel like things aren't going the way that you necessarily want them to go. And that's only because the Four of Diamonds is really big on bringing on kind of shattering illusions and stuff like that. So keep your defenses up, keep your um, positive mentality up so that you can do the things that you need to do this week. Um, and know that you are not being picked on by the universe. The universe is just trying to get you to realize the reality of your situation so you can do what you need to do and adjust your expectations and adjust just the level of work that you need to put in correctly. Next up, we have Sparky D or resistance. So this is asking you, what areas are you resisting letting things come in and letting life in, letting um love in also letting in the things that you need into your life where are you resisting that so instead of putting up a resistance now is the time to open up and let it flow next up we have kalani or superstition so again that concept and idea oh the world is against me that is not true this week the world is not against you it's not beating up on you it's not doing any of those things. It's not going to feed into your superstitious belief that you were just some kind of punching bag or anything of the sort like that. In reality, it is trying to push you in the right direction so that you can grow in the most stable and balanced and expansive way possible with the gifts and talents and abilities that you came down here with. Last but not least, we have Aaliyah, Angel which means that you have guardianship walking around with you this week. A lot of guardianship walking with you. 
Um, so you can tap into the spirit guides, tap into that. So that's also why the intuition cards kept coming up where you have the six of clubs, six of spades, queen of clubs, all of those different cards along in those spreads are going to be indicating that you are going to be able to tune in and tap into divine guidance and you have access to that this week so that you can get everything that you need to get and do what you need to do. So um, do we need to know anything else now? Normally, I only stick to five cards, but this one kind of popped out. So we're just going to look at it. EVE, change. All right. So this is telling you that this week, your best bet is to roll with the punches. Remember, the four of diamonds sits between the five of hearts and the five of spades. So creating breakthroughs through change is a very, very big deal when it comes to this particular card. So making sure that you are taking the time to change, you have the power to change, you have the talents, you have the abilities, you have the gifts needed to change. Make those changes that you need to make this week. Do not put them off because next week is gonna be five of diamonds. And if you don't change this week, next week is gonna tap that ass, I'm just saying. All right, and is there anything else we need to know? No, 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 that's it. So that concludes this week's reading. Did you enjoy that reading? Because I know I had fun doing it, even though I was tired as hell in the end. But if you liked it, go ahead and do the thing. Like, share, comment, subscribe, send a messenger pigeon, whatever. And don't forget, I'm just as fun and crazy in person. So go ahead and do the thing and book with me at dreamscape.as.me. That's dreamscape coaching. Dot as dot me see the link below and go ahead and spend some time with me please i get lonely sometimes but not like all the time because i'm an introvert at the end of the day until next time loves <laughs>